All right, we're going UHG. We're selling this bike. Reason is my oldest dog, who's a Greyhound, just had leg amputation in January. Um, he has unfortunately may have cancer again. This is a Gen 2 2008 Turbo Hayabusa aftermarket levers, RCC Stage 2 Ultra kit. Has a custom tune based off of Richard at RCC Turbo. Based off that, this is a reinforced lengthen six over swing arm 41 tooth rear vortex sprocket tiger racing aluminum chain guard for the length that it needs to be this has got a 19 tooth front sprocket and then the wire you see here coming down and sensor goes to your heel tech qsc quick shifter which has been configured works perfectly fine all the lighting on this works great you will soon as you can see from the tire need to get a new tire it's getting down to the wear bars let's be honest um, this has been drag raced uh, mainly in the past on land speed record type of racing has golfer stainless steel braided dot approved brake lines front and rear rear pads are ebc hh centered pads front ones are golfer lines and then we have there's the line of course you see and then this is of course your catch can drain down here lowering links you can still go one step lower and here if you can see it i gotta get up in here this is your almost brand new walbro not 255 liter per hour. This is the higher rated one that will allow you to go and do a larger turbo if you want. Or if you want to stay with the Stage 2 Ultra Comp Turbo, you can stay with it. We have a wideband AEM, wideband O2 sensor, tile, 44 millimeter wastegate, which comes on the Stage 2, the Comp Turbo and T3 connection to the manifold. The oil feed line is new, well, 50 miles. Aftermarket CNC machined. Of course, all the aftermarket crap that everybody wants to do. Here's your AM wideband gauge. Has a short and the wiring harness that makes a loose connection just needs to be worked on. You go here, you'll see your golfer lines going down. Here we have a working Jags fuel pressure sensor. The clutch and the brakes were all bled completely and redone the same time that the brake lines were done. And if you can see, these are the EBC, not normal HH centered pads, but the race ones. They will make this thing stop on a dime. These are actually where the previous owner, David Thompson, raced in his race number, 9166. His son had 9168. So this was from his son's Gen 1. This is a land speed record front fender, Montgomery Racing low cut seat course real rear pylon and grab bar i have three shelves of stuff let me turn this over so you can see the led light we've got an extra one of these just in case that one goes bad for some reason rob at boosted cycle performance built this bike has wasner 9.5 to 1 compression pistons wasner rods ape oversized head studs ap other hardware including your manual chain tensioner uh, has of course this is a stage 2 ultra I can lift the tank and show you but everybody if you know a stage 2 ultra you know what that ultra means that's the water to air intercooler this is running engine ice in the uh, actual crankcase and also in the water to air system they are two separate systems you have to burp both of them and you have to do it right that has been done this bike just went through a total look over timing checked 
valve clearance checked. Everything checked out fine from Eric Higgins at h, h Racing. As one of my other videos already said, thanks go immensely out to him. Ransom Holbrook, world record nitrous Gen 1 Hayabusa holder. Also to Johnny Turbo Dobrin, the owner of Exotic Cycles for all of his consulting on this bike. He has been a godsend as well. Rob at Boosted Cycle Performance, when I talked with him, when I first got it, he was exceptionally helpful. I know you can call him, he will charge you, like anybody will. He's running a business, but he can give you some basics. Now, if you want any technical information and you wanna change this up, you better expect to pay. This was a very expensive build. I know it doesn't look it right now because it's dirty. I have not washed this. This was just ridden two days ago by me to test out everything. I just uh, updated the quick, quick shifter, got it running perfectly fine. No false neutrals or anything like that. It is a Heeltech QSE quick shifter and a Heeltech Speedo healer. They are under the seat here. I know this is getting long. I hate to do that, but everybody needs to see it. We've got these thumb screws which quickly release. So we've got those. This is one of the three seats. It's an aftermarket gel seat. Gives you a lot of cushioning. You have your battery, it's charged perfectly fine. Yosh connector, OBD connector, replacement ECU. That was what was the problem with the bike. If anybody remembers seeing my videos last year, it was actually the ECU was not firing the secondaries. This is the first bit that you see of Rob's Power block. This is your QSE quick shifter from Heeltech. And there is your Speedo Healer. This here is a fusible link that goes to what I'll show you here in just a second. We'll unlock this. Yes, I know I have an Indian thing that came from the previous owner. So here we have an AMS 1000. You can do boost by gear. You can do just solid single boost with one, uh, one setting for all gears. You can go by basically all sorts of things. I'm not gonna show you how to do it because it's the secrets of the trade and I don't wanna take somebody's business. But I will tell you that you can hook this up via USB here. This controls your AMS 1000 and you can basically uh, configure it how you want. What you're seeing here is Rob's power block setup. It's the continuation of this. Comes up, brackets here, has this nice solid mount here. Then you've got your main relay, got your high beam relay, your fuel pump here. This has also got the stator, uh, just was done in the crank position sensor, which you can't see, of course. Eric Higgins just did it. Uh, this also has just had the Ryan Schnitz Schnitz Racing relocation for the rectifier, which normally will go down here by your links. So it has been relocated. Sorry, this is the only damage on the bike right here. This was here when I got it, still here. It's just cosmetic. You can change the tailpiece. Just get this single side here if you want and get them painted from uh, Suzuki. They're not that expensive, a couple hundred bucks. I just didn't care. I'm more about performance. So your rear master cylinder is here for your brakes. This wire here that I'm touching goes to the rectifier. It is mounted right behind this hump part that bumps out for your rear turn signal on your right side. That is where it is located. I can't get a good picture of it or show you. Sorry about the finger in the way, but it is down, if you can see my finger point, right down in here, between this here and the actual frame rail. So anyways, enough about all this. You wanna see the bike start like everybody wants to. So here we go. This is not an exact cold start, I will let you know. I did start it once for a gentleman just a little bit ago and ran it. So it's not a, a total cold start because I hadn't started it in two days. Here it goes. This switch I didn't mention. This is a switch that allows you to go from where it's at now, which is 93 octane, 
and then that is running off the boost settings here which currently I've downed it to just 16 psi from third gear on um, it's an 8 psi boost in the first gear 12 in the second 16 third through sixth uh, gear now you can change that it's very simple if you have any questions about it you can talk to me when you buy it I'm not going to give that secret out of how to tune the AMS because again this is how the tuners make their money I don't want to take money away from it but if you buy the bike I will tell you and teach you how to do it so that saves you a whale of a lot of money because normally these are secrets of the trade since you're buying the bike I'll do that just shut up let you hear it run set for the fans to kick on at 80 degrees Fahrenheit then they kick on at high at 85 degrees this is so it does not overheat if you're in the desert southwest if you're down in Florida in that humidity if you're down in Louisiana you are not going to have a problem with this if you want to daily this if you want to grudge race it you're going to be fine sorry I'm talking so loud but you know bike's loud I'll let it rev a little bit more gentle rev so you'll see what I'm doing. So we're not getting into a boost here about 4,500. We got to go up. So you got to go up there. Now one last thing I'm going to show. I know this is getting really lengthy. Sorry, but I want everybody to be informed. Sorry, I'm trying to get the seat back on because I have to do this while I'm on the seat. This has got two step engaged as well. So, let's sit on the bike, throw these knobs in here. I'm gonna have to put you down. We're in my pocket for this, so apologize. Here we go. So, two step is engaged. All right, so we've heard everything. You heard the two-step. It didn't get hot enough to need the fans to kick on. You can hear the fuel prime. All the lights on this work perfectly fine. It's gonna need a tire like I mentioned earlier. And these are Michelin, so, hey, they're not your Stinkos. I mean, Shinko, sorry. Anyways, you guys are interested in this bike. Don't waste my time. Everyone that knows what they're looking at here knows what this is worth, knows the money that's been spent in it, know the time that Rob spent on it. You should know the time that the other people that I've mentioned previously have spent on it and the money I've spent on it. Now, if you're serious, you give me a call. We'll do business. You'll have a solid running bike. I've got gearing for the rear going from 35 teeth all the way up to the stock 43. Now, do you want to run a 43 in the rear with the 19 front? Yeah, if you're roll racing and you don't want to go over a little bit over 200, sure. Now, right now it's geared. It'll go about 2, 218, 220, somewhere around in that. It was geared previously for 256 with a 19 front, 36 rear. That was fucking nuts. Let's just be honest. It was totally insane trying to daily this, street ride it. It's too tall of gearing. You're going to bog down. I don't care how experienced you are. I've been riding for nearly 20 years and I bogged down. So to make this shorter, just say again, you're interested, you give me a call. Let's work something out. I am pretty firm on the price. I've got a little wiggle room, but not a ton. Because remember, you're not just getting this bike. You're getting a Windows 7 PC loaded with ECU editor, the tune I got from Richard that has been tweaked to work properly with this bike. This bike was dyno tuned. If you look at some of my other videos and go to the playlist for the Hayabusa's, you'll see David Thompson's bike. That's what this is. This was David's bike. And it dynoed at 397 when built by Rob at Boosted Cycle Performance. This is the same build. 
Nothing has deviated from that other than I improved the braking dramatically uh, with the DOT stainless steel braided brake lines and the race pads up front and the centered HH EBCs in the back. It is a solid bike. You should have no problems. I have tested it now in 90 degree weather, riding it in rush hour traffic where it used to overheat and get hot and it would leave you stranded. No, not anymore. Or you'd have to let it cool down. You can daily this thing if you're brave enough. If you want to go to the track, you want to do quarter mile, you got the gearing to do it. I've got a brand, EK, a brand new EK chain. Um, it's the ZZ2. That's what's on there now. I've got two other of them at different lengths. I've got a brand new one sitting in the garage. Right here. It's in the garage. Don't believe me. I don't have a bunch of other parts. Hey, I've also got the Boost by Smith flasher. You don't have to buy it. It's already here. Say you need something else? Oh, okay. How about the original computer? It's down in here. Just replace the computer as I mentioned previously. You got the original with the tune from Rob. Now, the computer itself was a problem, so you can't run it, but you can actually pull off the tune that Rob had done for it, which ran 397 horsepower. Oh, say so that's not enough? How about Heeltex OBD2 diagnostic? That's in this bag. Oh, say so that's still not enough. How about some brand new spark plugs, brand new OEM Denso coils? You go price them out. Tell me how least expensive they are that you can find. A stock swing arm. Yeah, it's in the midst of a bunch of stuff. A stock seat with no foam on it, so you sit down lower. How about a stock undertail? Can't run it right now because you got the bracing for more stability. Here's a Tiger Racing one. Here's a stock air box. Here's the additional LED light. Here's an additional license plate holder. Not expensive, but hey, there you go. Additional bolts, zip ties, shorter Tiger Racing aluminum uh, chain guard, all the extra parts for the engine. That tub down there is all the extra gearing and the additional chains. Here's your brand new chain, never been out of the box. I mean, you're getting tons of extras with this. So we also have the stock underbelly, which you can't run now because it's got that block. But as you can see from this mess, why I'm getting rid of this. Stage four cancer. I had it, beat it, but it has debilitated me. I cannot ride something like that. I don't have the money now after going through all that to enjoy this. Let's just be honest. It's not comfortable. Don't want to believe me? Here, let me show you what I dealt with. This is my gut. No, you all don't want to see it. That's the incision. Goes from my sternum all the way down to below my belly button. About that. So, that's what I went through. I lost half my insides. I'm lucky to be here. Blessed by the grace of God to be here. But, it has now caused me a mild hernia. I cannot ride this comfortably. And I could possibly injure myself and kill myself if... I were to ever wreck, I'd probably kill myself. So this needs to go somebody that can enjoy it. Don't have to take it to the track. Go daily it if you're brave enough. Go take it to the quarter mile. You got all the gearing. You don't need anything. I'm gonna shut up. Thank you so much, everyone, for bearing with me. I've been long-winded, but I really want this to go to a good home. I know David Thompson, who I'm still in contact with and will give you his contact information so you can get the whole history on this bike prior to my ownership. Uh, he is still available. He is a land speed racer that's now retired. He is down in Georgia. And I will give you his number as he would like me to do that, I'm sure. Thanks, everyone. Have a blessed day. Give me a call. Jared, 859-536-4447. Really appreciate it.